Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Later today, as you know, several million Americans will be watching the Super Bowl on TV as two teams, football teams, duke it out in a great contest. However, unbeknownst to many, many Americans, another great contest, far more spectacular than what you'll see on TV tonight, happened some 2,000 years ago. Now this contest was, of course, Jesus and his advance and triumph over Satan and his kingdom of evil. And that great contest, what was at stake wasn't a shiny trophy or team pride. You could say that what was at stake was the glory of God and the eternal destiny of humans. And today in our gospel lesson we get a front row seat to the contest between Jesus and Satan. A contest that Jesus handily wins a decisive and everlasting victory. As we take a closer look at our gospel lesson today, we're going to learn more about our champion, Jesus. We will learn that Jesus is someone whose words and actions together reveal someone with great power and authority and whose triumph over Satan and his demons means sweet, sweet, eternal victory for us. Let's delve into our gospel and learn more about our champion, Jesus, the powerful Son of God, who has conquered Satan for us. Our gospel text begins with Jesus and the four disciples whom he called earlier, we read last week, Simon, Andrew, James, and John. And the five of them enter a synagogue in the town of Capernaum. It's a Sabbath day. And Jesus teaches there during their worship service. And the people are amazed at Jesus' powerful teaching. So here we learn that Jesus is someone whose words reveal somebody with great power and authority. Now a little historical background is appropriate here. As many of you know, a synagogue was essentially the church or the worship building for the Jews. When the nations of Israel and Judah were defeated and the Jews were scattered, wherever they went, they set up synagogues, worship buildings, where they would meet every Sabbath, our Saturday. And they would hear the word of God, what would be our Old Testament. And they had a liturgy. And they had a man get up and speak and preach. And if you'd like to know our divine service on Sunday morning, what we're following today is patterned on this Jewish worship. Now oftentimes in those days, synagogue rulers would ask a guest to preach. Usually it was a scribe, a, a professional religious teacher, but sometimes it wasn't. So in our story, Jesus would have been invited to preach. And preach did he. Boy, did he preach. The people were amazed at his power. For one thing, Jesus didn't teach like the scribes. And we have records of how the scribes used to teach. And according to some of these records, some of the things that they would teach bordered on what we would think today is silliness. They would teach things about how long the fringes of your cloak should be. About how big the phylacteries on your head should be. These were these little boxes that they had on their head that contained verses, Bible verses inside. They would talk and teach about how you should anoint and wash your cups and how you should anoint and wash your platters and how many steps you were allowed to take outside of your home on the Sabbath day. And their rhetoric was often filled with phrases like, 
Well, Rabbi so-and-so says this. Yes, but Rabbi so-and-so says this, and Rabbi so-and-so says this. Mind you, they were good scribes, of course. But how refreshing it must have been when Jesus stood up and taught the people and simply said, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Now we need to remember that it wasn't just Jesus' superior teaching skills that were the issue here. Jesus could teach with power and authority because he was the promised mouthpiece of God. He is the one that God promised the Israelites would come, just as we read about in our Old Testament lesson. God told the Israelites through Moses that a special brother among them would come, a prophet like Moses, who would teach, and you would need to listen to him. And he was going to speak the very words of God. But Jesus is more special than Moses. Moses would meet with God face to face and teach the people that God, or Jesus was God in the flesh. He is the Son of God. He is omniscient. He knows all things. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He's holy. He was perfectly righteous. He far exceeded anything that Moses was. No wonder Jesus could teach with power and authority. No wonder his words had punch. Now you might ask yourself, well, what was Jesus teaching exactly? Our text doesn't say. But if we do a little research, we know what he was saying. We know by going back a few verses in Mark chapter 1. What was Jesus teaching? What was he proclaiming? He was proclaiming the gospel of God. The good news. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. That's what he was teaching. And he would also teach things like this. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And he would teach things like this. I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. The core of Jesus' teaching was himself. He is the good news. He's the one who died for the sins of the whole world. Remember the good news? Jesus died for my sins. That's what he preached. That's what he taught. But you know, this good news wasn't good news for everybody. This good news was actually bad news for Satan. His demons. Because Jesus and the good news means freedom from sins and eternal life for people. And Satan means just the opposite. Bondage to sin and eternal death for people. Jesus is the greatest and only threat to the existence and power of Satan and his demons. So we see in our Gospel text that Jesus continues to teach in the synagogue with power, proclaiming the good news that a person with an unclean spirit, a demon, spectacularly interrupts things. And here's where we get to see how Jesus' words and actions together reveal that He is the powerful Son of God, who defeats and has conquered Satan for us. And let me just pick up that last part of our gospel text where he deals with this demon. Immediately in their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And what was Jesus' response? Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And the people were amazed and they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. Wow. That must have been quite the worship service. 
What an experience that must have been being there that day. Now here's the deal, friends. There are good angels and there are bad angels. The good angels worship and serve God who is light and life. And the bad angels serve their master, a bad angel himself, Satan, 